Hello everybody and welcome to this video tutorial how to model a baking set in Shaper 3D. In this process video I will primarily narrate how I created all the sketches and then the bodies and provide some tips and shortcuts about how to very effectively and quickly design all those geometrical objects. As always we want to have our unit system set to millimeters. Make sure all our snap elements are turned on. This file is shared, so you can download it and take a look at it while following this video. Great, now we can get started. Let's start this by taking a look at how I created and set up the sketches for the spatula and the knife. When you design a toy for a toddler, like in this case a baking set, what's important is ergonomics and how does it feel, how can the kit interact with the toy. It should be as comfortable and easy to use. So in my case also I wanted to make sure that the spatula and the knife are exactly the same proportion. So you see here in this case I drew both object sketches right below each other. And then to unify elements, for example, you can clearly see that each end has an arc. I dimensioned one arc and then rebuilt the same arc to the next object. So let's start with the, um, with the spatula. That is the easier object first to look at. So when I go into a 3D view, there you can see there is the profile for it. And I only created compared to the knife here, half of a sketch because it is a symmetrical object. I can extrude this later and then mirror and join it. So why create a sketch that is maybe showing the whole object, but actually takes more time to create and particularly more time to modify. By only having one half, if I have to adjust the sketch, I also eliminate the mistake that maybe the other side is adjusted incorrectly. Let's take a look at the end. This is an interesting process, how I set things up here. I did not want to have a quarter arc of an end rounding, but I wanted to have an arc or an end that kind of is art and then terminates sharp into the side of the handle. And then the resulting edge where I clicked, I could later round with a fillet. So to um, adjust or create this end, you see I simply created here an, an arc. I'm just removing all the dimensions. And this arc I can manipulate, change, and uh, so I increase or decrease the radius. And then this basically changes the curve. So you see a very, very interesting process. We don't need to have the arc terminate or touch the line. They can simply overlap. When we go into a 3D view, you can see that Shaper will create a filled profile, which we can use for extrusion. So it's just one tip. When you do sketches in concepts that don't necessarily always have to perfectly, um, or lines or curves don't always have to perfectly touch each other. They can simply cross each other. To create this really nice transition from a front line that is vertical, then into this swooped side curve that then terminates back into the handle. I used the spline with the option control point. So let me delete this edge here so you can see kind of like what I have. So I needed to figure out, and this is also a typical process, at the beginning you don't know all the points you need. I need to figure out how many points do I need to create the shape I'm actually looking for. So I drew kind of like this shape out. You saw that shape you here automatically added the tangency constraint. I can add the tangency constraint here to the end. And then when I move these points, I can massage the flow of that curve. Now, if I would like this corner here to be tighter, I can move this point over. But this area of my curve remains kinder, it bends a little bit too much. So. That is why, maybe not two points, I have to put down three points. One, two, three, then I go over and to there. Now there you can see how this section is much, much straighter and I can even further compact this. 
So it's a very common process when working with the uh, control point spline. When we spread points apart, we even out uh, soften a curve. When we group them together, we can actually pinch a curve, make it really tight to turn. Okay, let me undo all the steps till I have my original curve back. There we are. So, all good. Now to create our first geometry, I can extrude this one out by half of the material thickness. So 0.25 and then I select the other side and say be five millimeters. So here now I have half of the object, as you can see. Then I double tap, select everything, more, go mirror, select this face, then you can see it creates a mirror plane right along that face. That's perfect. Select done, double tap, double tap, and join, so union, and done. Now I have one object. Very nice. Now to chamfer the tip of the spatula, it will help actually in function, also be functional, to lift off the dough from the baking sheet. We need to chamfer this edge. I can select this edge with the correct movement. There you see, I can add a chamfer. If I would like to rotate this chamfer, here's a little tip. I select this face, go to move, bring the 3D widget down to the edge around which I would like to rotate, and then with the pencil, adjust the rotation. Very cool, no? Very easy. Now, if I would like to have more control in how I will chamfer it, I could also create a sketch either from the top. In my case, I did it from the bottom view. And the sketch should be a little bit bigger than the actual object, so I'm overbuilding. And think about this triangular piece kind of like as a knife, which we will extrude and run through this handle. You can see with a sketch, I have also the ability to define, for example, the angle between these two lines. So it gives me a certain amount of um, control. I also brought the sketch to the right side more to here. So I don't necessarily know how high this or how long this length is. If this would be of importance, then this line, we would simply bring over to there and then using the grid, I could specify where this point is. Okay, so with this done, Let's go to this view, select the fill, and cut through. Very good. And there we are. And then we would like to round this a little bit more. Select the edge with the pencil, drag out the fillet command. Very good. So you see, um, the sketch is set up in a very minimalistic way, and it gives me maximum of creativity. If I don't like the design, then I could quickly go back, modify one point, and then redo the whole process. So to create variations, this is a very ideal way. Let's take a look at the knife. At first, the sketches will, the way how it's set up will look a little bit confusing, but there's actually a clear logic here behind. Let me go into a perspective view first. So with the knife, we have two objects, the blade and the handle. And instead of making the sketches uh, separate, uh, I, I always tend to try to draw sketches in place where the object is. And here we have two objects. I needed to figure out what would be a good way to create everything here in an easy way. So everything when I'm selecting here right now, that for example defines the blade. So I have this line and this line, this line here, there, and then the center line. Okay, easy, no? Pretty easy. That is what I drew first. Because I can select this and then similar to what I did with the, the spatula, extrude left and right. The handle is actually a revolve object. So I need half of the sketch. So I started by copying over this arc and the top line. So there you see, there's my arc and this top line. I only need half of the piece. Here is my center line. Very good. And then I added the bottom and the left 
line to there. I added these lines actually for dimension purpose. So here's another tip how you can try to think about this. If, for example, all this is a tick too complex and you just want to have these two pieces and with one click I want to select here the knife part, these, this line and this um, line we could, for example, replace by this I delete and simply you see add a dimension. I remove the dimension for the moment and then this point, uh, I can't actually move up, hold on, I have to trim this away. Very good. So, however, with this done, what I should do now is select this point and this point, go to dimension, say one centimeter, but use the horizontal alignment there. Okay. No? And this should be nine millimeters. Very good. So this doesn't really move anymore. And you see that actually works too. I can select this, select then this center axis and on the left side we do a revolve. Really nice. Let's hide this object for the moment there and I will select those two fills. This is what defines the knife, so the blade I mean, sorry, and 2.5 and then here I select both, drag up and I drag it up till it is five millimeters and actually I think this dragged it by three so another 2.5 to very final when I click this yep it says five millimeters very good there you can see how it measures everything I'm going to call okay so now we have the blade done let's turn on the handle what do we create the cut into the handle. That's super easy. Double tap the handle, double tap the knife, subtract, and then here keep originals. That's an interesting feature to think about. So the removed body, you see there's actually a minus in front of removed plus modified. So and on top you see the plus means select the bodies to remove from. So that's our target and minus select bodies to remove. Think about the magenta that is our target and the scion that is our tool. So we want to keep the tool. If we do it like this, click done, you see it's gone. One more time. There. Now, oh, hold on one second. Okay, so double tap, double tap and subtract. There it is. Okay, very good. So here you see we have both objects. Pretty cool. So this way you're not, um, how can I say that, having the issue of modeling something and then you remove um, or you, you, you cut the space by removing the body for example, the blade, and then you have to rebuild the blade. All these extra steps are not only labor intensive, but all these extra steps also could be a, a cause of problems, mistakes. Now, I would like to round with a chamfer command this edge. So I could, for example, select the edge, chamfer it. But now this is a little bit more complicated. It is also curved, so I can't just rotate it. And a very easy way is to draw like a sketch on one side, as you can see here, and then select an edge like there. So it's a nice sweep path and then we sweep it. Very cool. Now I have to be careful. This is my body number one. There's my first and my second swept body. And then I say subtract. In this case here, obviously, I don't want these bodies. So I click none. Oh, pretty cool. So let me undo actually everything till there. Because I'm going to show you now how we can create a sketch right onto the surface. I will do this actually on this side for demonstration purpose. So I select this face, double tap. That's another really nice 
feature in Shapier how this works. So by selecting a face that's flat and then with a finger double tapping onto it, it puts a sketch grid or a plane right onto that face. And now I could draw from somewhere in line, move it onto an edge of a body here in the midpoint, and then it will project this edge of my geometry into my sketch. This point I can move to there. This point I can move onto this edge. It moved then in also the, the other two edges of my geometry. If I hide all this, there you can see what happened. Pretty cool, no? Select and double tap to go back into this view. Both points I would like to be vertical. That's one very simple way. Let's draw a line, connect them, and then set them vertically aligned. Uh, sorry, not very light, vertically constrained. This has the nice feature that now I can simply drag this and both points move. And that is pretty much how I created this sketch right there at the tip. Okay, very good. So you see, this is actually quite, quite easy to do. It's just trying to take a look at the design we are envisioning and what are the individual shapes we see and what type of tools do we need to rebuild them. Obviously, there are many ways how to get to the same outcome. And there are multiple ways which are good, but some ways are more effective. Well, for example, half a sketch instead of a complete sketch. And other methods might actually be more labor intensive. So let's take a look at the baking sheet and how I set up everything because our end result is later that we also want to be able to place all those cookie dough slices together with that frosting on top perfectly centered or aligned on the baking sheet. We study actually the sketch from here. You can see I started with a simply with a very basic square. And then if we go to the side, you can see at various levels, there are some other elements. So I will move this a little bit down and then try to recreate it. I like very often when I work along the Y or the X axis line up objects. This is not necessarily really important for me. This is just a method kind of like to work clean in a certain way. So the x-axis, I will simply simulate by drawing myself here another line. And so that this axis doesn't move, I will draw this uh, as a black line. No? Okay, very easy. So the baking sheet has 225 by 295. So somewhere, I just draw myself a sketch. 295, very good. And then this will be 225. Okay, so how or what is in a very easy way to align actually along the y-axis? That means how can I move this one up and down so that the midpoint is perfectly centered on my virtual x-axis. There's a very simple trick. So from the axis, I draw a line and make the line snap onto a midpoint. The start point I lock, so this can't move anymore. I will remove now my virtual x-axis, so it's out of our way. You can see at the bottom how, how the x-axis runs perfectly horizontally centered through the sketch. And then this line I will select and edit a horizontal constraint. And there you see it moves everything down. Perfect. Now I can move this left and right, position this a little bit more. And if I like everything here, this line now I remove. I have to be careful. I should not move this one up or down because it could move. To prevent it from moving, if I don't want this, I could, for example, lock a point. Or, actually, this I will keep. Now, when I go ahead and say, you be 
235, you see how, or 200, everything shrinks to our, this one line. In the lower case, it would all shrink or expand away or to the x-axis. Just another modeling tip. Okay, so the baking sheet uh, is, it has um, a rim. How do I create all, all this? Let me turn the master here on so you can see everything. There we are. No? I want this to be rather very simple, not complicated. So we will start just with a rectangle. We don't need anything else. I can extrude this as much as needed. Very good. Then the edges are rounded. I will now select these edges and fillet them. 15 millimeters, very nice. Then click deselect, click sketch, this is actually important. Then select offset edge and tap the face, so the top or the cap of the geometry. And you see it selects then the outer edge. And then simply drag this one in, one centimeter, very cool. Then we can select this new sketch and extrude it down. You see how simple that was. So we started with a very basic square rectangle, centered it, extruded it up, and then in direct modeling, I added the rounded corner features, and then I did a, an offset to create a new sketch for the inside and extruded, cut it into the body. Very simplistic steps. Now, how did I set up this design with all these rings? This actually also, um, it looks complicated, but it is actually quite easy. So on this base here, I want to create a sketch. So I select it with a finger double tap. Now the, the, the camera and the sketch is kind of like moved right onto that face. And I would like to first project in all these edges one more time. So there is one line, there is the other line, then one line, one line, ah, and that didn't really come over. So let's draw a new line. And here I draw a new line. There we are. Very nice. All this was actually just a helper. So I've removed this now. Let's take a look at the horizontal one. So here we have a distance to the outside of four. Uh, very good. So horizontal line, horizontal line. And here center is just midpoint to midpoint. That's very easy. Now this area and this area should have the same height. So along the Y axis, same to here. How can I do this? I could try to figure this out via dimensions or I do a really old school classic trick. I draw lines, which I create them perpendicular to each other. Or you see here it's using um, yeah perpendicular this line to the horizontal line. And if I set this to 40 millimeters, okay, it just moves this one down. But I want this one to be 42. Well, not a big deal. We can type 40 in there. Then the bottom one, the client says, hey, make this 30, and then I can go to here and change this to 30. <laughs> this is this is going to be too much work when we have something like this. So what's a shortcut? That's also the secret here is using these two lines, and then we use the equal constraint. So when I set this to 40, you see that the upper line actually moved down. No? Super easy. Now, because we have uh, just three horizontal lines, the midline doesn't move. When I modify this one, the upper one on top moves too. So that makes it pretty, pretty easy. So let's go back to 40. Okay. So then we have one, two, three more. So one here, one there, and another one. So we have four now. Okay. So now I would like to have this and this be 40 and these in the, in the inside the same. Now there we have three columns. So we don't have a line along the midpoint of an edge from there to there. How do we do this? Also that 
pretty simple. This line I will simply delete and then here recreate everything via lines. This and this, let's be equal. And then you to here be equal. So when we change this to 30, and you see how beautifully the sketch lines up. Yeah, and then to make sure this is all even, well, you know the answer, correct. Select all three lines and equal constraint. That's it. Now, we make this 20, and you see how everything adjusts. Perfect. Cool, no? Okay. So to create those openings in there, that's very easy. Circle from here and there and there, 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 there. So where we have two lines where they intersect, we have a snapping point. This line here, I, oh, sorry, um, this circle I will select and say this has a radius of 10 millimeters, so a diameter of 2 centimeters. And because we do not really want to constrain all these uh, circles too, we select them and then this at the end and equal. So we make this 20 or 10. There you see all updates. The only downside of this process is now if I go into 3D view and I would like to do my cut into the depression, I have to select all these kind of like pie slices. And then when this is done, or I select it all, I can extrude this down a little bit. And this pretty much is the process I used to create this one. At the end, I also rounded this lower edge to get a nice comfortable feel. So if a three-year-old would hold this tablet, there wouldn't be any sharp edge. Preferably in manufacturing, this would be made out of um, MDF wood, so it can be actually quite sharp. And we want to prevent any pain or something. So I will quickly clean this up, remove those sketches, and let's take a look at our last pieces, how we did this. So we have a slice of cookie dough and then two frosting elements. These rings are actually openings into which we could put Velcro discs in. So we can this way then um, kind of like make these pieces more stick together. Kind of hard actually with Velcro. Forcing the toddler to use the spatula to really lift up the pieces and we ha when we take all our cookie dough discs and we have the velcro put them together the toddler with the knife can try to spread them apart so this is actually a really fantastic simple tool to stimulate also fine motoric growth skills so how do we design something like this so i have a, a ring with another ring so I will put this one down here. So I start just with a ring. The radius is 30. There we are. And then another ring to the inside, 10. So the diameter then is 20. I can select both. I will extrude this up 8 millimeters. And then I have this ring down here. Extrude this in 2 millimeters. Yeah, what I do with top, I don't have a ring there. I got, could go to sketch and sketch on it, but that's not really what I want. But with nothing selected, actually I go into sketch, then select um, the offset in here, make myself a ring, tap on somewhere on the grid, select this ring, and wow, this is actually perfectly offset. This is already as it should be, 10 millimeters, and then I can um, extrude this down as needed. Pretty cool, no? Easy. Again, step by step, very simplistic means very often lead to a more enjoyable process. And I said that also before, the more simplistic your sketches are, that 
with simplicity, I'm not necessarily talking about boring, but you also need to understand um, what level of detail is at one point going to have an impact on your productivity. Now, how do I can create those um, the frosting parts? For this type of a shape, actually, I found that the fit point curve is much better. So with the fit point curve, we can draw a spline that runs through these points. That's actually different than the control point curve, where the curve, as you can see, is interpolated inside. Technically speaking, I could get the same results out of each type, but with the fit point curve, it's a lot easier here to quickly sketch something and make sure that this the object will remain inside this circle. Okay, that's kind of like the parameter. So let's go to fit point. There we are. And I have one, one, two, three, four, five corners. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm going to start just drawing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and there. Very good. It might make sense to turn off the snapping at this point so we can more freely move everything around. And this should simulate cookie dough frosting, so this should not be machined perfect. Maybe a little bit to there, a little bit higher. Okay, I get very sharp tips here. When you select a fit point, you see there are handles. We can select a handle and pull it out. And this way, so nicely, adjust actually the flow a little bit more. Yeah, look at that. Now, you make a variation. Again, no. easy step. Do I have to redraw everything? No, just let's make a copy, move this over, and then I could go in and say, oh, maybe for this one, a little bit less dramatic. I can just randomize the points. And you see how easy this is. Also in this case, select both. Then we move this up eight millimeters and this we move up two. Very good. So let me delete these two additions here. This then basically explains how I set up all the sketches to model the cookie dough pieces. Now, how do I put all this together into my nice assembly I have here? One other very important tip I can give is, as you can see, I have a folder that just has objects in it. I have a folder for my masterpieces. I have a folder for my sketches. Try to really make use of folders. It's so easy because when I select the assembled folder, you see it also selects all the objects inside. That saves you a lot of work. In our case here, let's make a new folder. And there we are. And then double tap everything. Make a copy. I move this one to somewhere there. Go to the folder. Select those. And in the folder at the bottom, I select um, the move selected to here command. There. So now all this is inside this folder. Pretty cool. Now, let's actually start with this one and bring a copy to here, move this to there and there. Yeah, how do I make this one line up perfectly centered? So there is an align command for that. So I can go to this view. Hold on one second, select all object, go to align. And then you see I have now a center, a mid and a top point. And I tried to get these two objects very close together. 
because now I can with the pencil draw from the center down to here. Also there, now it it found actually the cylindrical opening, bottom, mid, and top point. I draw to the top point and release the pen. Done. There we are. Yeah, and there you can see the edge is down there. Let's do this one more time. So I make a, another copy, move this up, move this over again. It's a very important tip to get these things together. Align, zip, down to there, and there. Okay. If, for example, this might be based on your design or so too complicated, or maybe too labor intensive, we could also turn on this show hidden edges. Because now if I go into the top view, double tap and select the dough, make a copy, move this down, and okay, so it's 62.5. Very nice. Good, this lines up. And all those, copy, move this over by, oh, this is 65, then this is 130 and 195. There, you see how fast that was. There's always a little bit um, set up at the beginning and then it's kind of like copy and paste. Okay, how do we get these pieces on? Well, pretty much the same process. Select this one, align, and from here to there, there we are. Done, select this one, align, Oh, there, it didn't do it. Rotate the view a little bit, and from the bottom point to here, the top one. So we now double tap and double tap. This is 62.5. And one more. Select all. When you do this, be careful you do not double tap on an edge or so. You want to just double tap on a face. Copy and 130. There. So fast. What it looked intimidating, as you saw, we can do this in no time with some very smart copy, move, align, and then overlay techniques. Now to make the whole design actually stand out a little bit better, also visual communication, is to add basic colors to these objects. So you see the knife handle is red, the dough is brown, the frosting is white or dark brown, and everything else is a gray. And for this, we can use the color tool. At the bottom, we have a palette. So if I select this knife, I will tap, I could select the color, make this blue or red. Maybe adjust the values, browse colors. And this is basically how then I can very quickly theme something. And if I would like to find a color, there's also an eyedropper. See there, tapped onto there. And there now it found actually the color. So when I select this, and you see then this frosting gets the same color as the dome. And we reached the end of our lecture, and I hope that the process I showed you how to set up the sketches and then use smart modeling techniques and alignment tools was very informative to create quickly a kind of fun to use baking toy set for a toddler.